Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After the extinction of the non-avian theropod dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous, mammals finally had the opportunity to expand into increasingly large carnivorous niches. In Eurasia, Africa and North America, Laurasiotherian placentals took up the role, with a variety of different predatory groups emerging during the Paleocene. These included the hoofed mesonychids, the ambush-hunting oxyenids, and the highly successful hyenodonts. In stark contrast to the familiar modern world, carnivoran mammals were not particularly diverse or prominent during the Paleocene and early Eocene. The majority were fairly small, arboreal generalists, similar to raccoons, civets and gannets. These early carnivorans were previously classified in the family Miacidae, although more recent studies have shown this group to be invalid, being more of a grade leading up to the more derived feliform and caniform carnivorans. The latter two groups began to diverge during the Middle Eocene about 43 million years ago, with the earliest known caniforms being the amphicyonids. Modern caniforms include dogs, bears, mustelids and pinnipeds, although some extinct forms would have seemed like hybrids of familiar living taxa. The amphicyonids were a good example of this, possessing a combination of features which has led to their common name of the bear dogs. However, these animals were neither bears or dogs, being more basal than either. This family first appears in the fossil record of Middle Eocene North America roughly 42 million years ago, with early forms being very similar to the so-called Miacids. Indeed, the most basal amphicyonid so far known, the genus Gustavsonia, was once classified as a species of Miacis. This cat-sized animal was native to Middle Eocene Texas, and was probably a generalised civet-like animal that fed on rodents, insects and small reptiles. Weighing just 5 kilograms or 11 pounds, Gustav Sonia would have still been capable of climbing trees to escape larger predators. Although only a single skull is known, it is likely that this genus possessed a long tail and relatively short limbs. From these humble origins, amphicyonids would spread into Europe and Asia by the late Eocene although many forms remained endemic to North America. One such group were the Daphonines, which were superficially dog-like animals, albeit with longer torsos, shorter legs, and longer, heavier tails than modern canids. Daphonines were not the dominant carnivores in their environment, seeing as they lived alongside entelodonts and hyenodontids. The oldest member of this subfamily was the genus Daphonus, first appearing in the Middle Eocene only a few million years later than Gustav Sonia. A remarkably successful animal, Daphonus produced up to six species and survived until the Middle Miocene, existing for approximately 21 million years. A coyote-sized form, this ambush hunter possessed short legs and could only make brief bounds and sprints. It was therefore not capable of running for long distances. Potential prey would have included a variety of oreodonts, lagomorphs, and extinct relatives of modern chevrotains. Fossil footprints suggest that, like present-day bears, these animals walked in a plantigrade way, with remains of Daphonius being recovered from the western and central regions of the United States, as well as southern Canada. Other Eocene and Oligocene Daphonines were also dog-like ambush predators as well. A later member, Daphonodon, was a wolf-sized animal of the early Miocene, which demonstrated increased adaptations for pursuing prey in more open environments. Weighing up to 220 pounds, Daphonodon preyed on small horses such as Merikippus, as well as the earliest pronghorns. The changing ecosystems of Miocene North America are clearly visible in the adaptations of this genus with natural selection favouring longer limbs and a better ability to run for longer distances. This American subfamily died out during the Middle Miocene, perhaps as a result of climatic cooling and competition with canids and larger amphicyonids of Eurasian origin. Another endemic North American subfamily, the Temnocyoninae, were also present during the Oligocene and Early Miocene, being similarly wolf-sized predators. It would appear that these animals were outcompeted by canids, as these moderate amphicyonids were not as well adapted for running and possessed significantly smaller brains than either bears or dogs. Interestingly, it would be the larger amphicyonids that would persist the longest, with the amphicyonian subfamily containing all of the most massive forms. This group was wide-ranging, 
dwelling across Eurasia, Africa and North America. As with its close relatives, the earliest Amphicyonians were small and quite generalised animals. A good example was the late Eocene Eurasian genus Cynodictus, a long-bodied, long-tailed form about the size of a small dog. In life, Cynodictus would probably have resembled a modern gennet and probably lived a similar lifestyle, being an ambush hunter of small prey. Later Amphicyonians were generally far larger and began to truly thrive during the Miocene, often being among the apex predators in their environments. The genus Isengrenia was notable in this regard, with the oldest remains of this grey wolf-sized animal recovered from Europe and Japan. About 23 million years ago, Isengrenia entered North America at a time of significant faunal turnovers. With a flood of Eurasian species entering the continent and replacing native forms such as the aforementioned Daphonus, the genus established a presence across the continent. Along with the wide distribution of its fossils in Eurasia, this suggests Isengrenia was flexible in its habits. North American fossil sediments suggest that individuals often lived or found food alongside rivers and near waterholes. Meanwhile, the Spanish genus Magarision thrived in the warm subtropical woodlands of the Middle Miocene. About the size of a leopard, weighing up to 91 kilograms or 200 pounds, Magarision would have resembled a particularly robust large felid, but the skull was far more similar to that of a canid or an ursid. This animal occupied a different ecological niche than other Amphicyonids, such as the larger Amphicyon and the more cursorial Daphonodon. Magarision probably lived in similar manner to modern felines, being an ambush hunter of large prey. Recent studies have revealed that Magarision had powerful jaw and neck muscles that helped to stabilise its head and jaws while biting. The Amphicyonid was particularly adept at side-to-side -side movements and rotations of the head. This feature allowed Magarision to swiftly and efficiently process meat on a carcass allowing the bear dog to devour sufficient amounts of flesh before scavengers arrived to steal the predator's hard-earned meal. This animal shared the apex predator niche at the Cerro de los Batalones site with two saber-toothed cats, with these being the leopard-like Promeganterion and the tiger-sized Macarodus. Carbon-13 analysis has revealed niche partitioning between these predators, with the cats preferring more heavily forested areas while Magarision seemed to have preferred more open environments. Ideal prey would have included the antelope, Ostroportax, and the small horse, Hippotherium, which would have been stalked and ambushed by the Amphicyonid in a lion-like manner. In Middle Miocene North America, the powerful endemic genus Ischerosion was among the apex predators of the continent. Standing over 3 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 300 kilograms or 661 pounds, Ishirosion probably pursued prey for longer distances, but at slower speeds than living ambush predators do. Upon catching up to its prey, Ishirosion grabbed its victim using its powerfully muscled forelimbs before killing them by tearing into the prey's ribcage or neck using its large strong canine set in its narrow snout. However, the most successful and long-lived Amphicyonin was the genus Amphicyon itself. Originating in the early Miocene, this animal was by far the largest member of the family and one of the most massive terrestrial carnivorous mammals to ever live. The species A. ingens and A. giganteus were comparable in size to a large polar bear, weighing up to 700 kilograms or 1,543 pounds although with masses of 500 kilograms or so being more typical. At these dimensions, Amphicyon would have also resembled a bear, but with a more wolf-like skull, a long heavy tail, and a hypercarnivorous diet. Walking on plantigrade feet, this animal was an ambush hunter that was capable of some sustained running, similar to the ambush hunting behaviour observed in modern grizzly bears when targeting deer. Native to Eurasia, North America, and possibly Namibia in Southern Africa, Amphicyon was capable of preying on a wide range of large prey, including rhinos, juvenile proboscideans, and ancient relatives of giraffes. By the end of the Miocene, this genus was the last remaining Amphicyonid, with all smaller forms having gone extinct during the Middle Miocene. Amphicyon persisted the longest in the Indian subcontinent, where the species A. Lydecari survived into the late Pliocene approximately 2.6 million years ago. 
it's a little mind-blowing to think that bear dogs are still around as the earliest members of our own genus were beginning to appear in Africa. What finally finished off the Amphicyonids is still an unresolved question. Although the group may have struggled to adapt to the drying and increasingly open savanna and steppe ecosystems that emerged during the late Miocene and Pliocene. In addition, Amphicyonids were not highly adapted for either stealthy ambush hunting like modern cats, or for pursuit hunting like wolves and African hunting dogs. This jack of all trades approach may have turned against them in the end, with their competitors better able to exploit the environment of the Pliocene world. However, we should still appreciate Amphicyonids as incredibly successful animals that quickly became the first large carnivorans alongside the Feliform Nimravids. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the early Neosuchians, the oldest ancestors of modern crocodilians that first appeared during the early Jurassic. See you again soon. Cheerio.